These are three things I wish I knew in my 20s. And if I had the opportunity to go back to my younger self, I would tell him these things. One is don't be in such a hurry. And it's crazy how the older you get in life, the more you realize that there really isn't, you don't go any faster in God when you're in a hurry, right? You could definitely slow down your process in God, but you can't make it any faster. You can't outrun God. You know, there's a scripture in Habakkuk 2, 3 that says, the vision is yet for another point in time. In the end, it will speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. It will surely not tarry. Right, that scripture is kind of saying two things. Like, though it tarries, wait for it. It will not tarry. But I found that in due time, in everything in season, and everything has timing and seasons, as long as you're walking with God intentionally, it will come to pass. God is not this mean God that withholds things from people and he's just waiting for you to just make an error and then he's going to say, oh, delayed by one year. Oh, delayed by 20 years. Right? He's not that God. He's a good, good father waiting to bestow us with every good thing. Right? So now instead of hurrying, instead of trying to get ahead of yourself, instead of all that, what I would do is be patient, take my walk with God, more seriously, that's the most important part. Because as long as you are walking with him, all the promises, everything promised, every word spoken over you will come to pass. It's just don't be in a hurry, you know, because you're not running any faster. You're not going to get there any faster. And that's what I'm realizing now. And it's not to say be lethargic or don't be conscientious, all right? It's not to say any of those things. I think the most intentional you can be to living out your destiny in God is to just walk with Him. Take your communion with Him seriously. Take your consecration with Him seriously. And all of these things will just fall into place. I don't know how it happens, but it will. You know, the things in my life that have received the most, the directions and the places God has taken me the most, are things I didn't necessarily seek. I'm not saying don't seek things, right? But those things just came in my place of worship. Like, God, I give my life to you. God, I, you know, I give myself away. Do whatever you... And then the next day is just boom. You know, like, oh, here's a direction for your life. You know, here's what you should be doing. And that's just how it works. You know, so surrender is the word. If I could go back to my 20s, I would just tell that young man, surrender. Everything you're praying for is in the place of surrender. Surrender, surrender, surrender. And it's difficult. It's difficult for young people to surrender because they have all these bright ideas. They know exactly where they, they want to go and what should happen in their lives. But the strength in surrender. Second thing I would tell myself is take your walk with God seriously. Like go hard after God. Like go hard. Now, when I came to God, I was about the age of 21, 22. And I'm not saying I didn't go hard, but if you took me back, I would go even harder. Because when you look back, every time I look back, all the stories I tell about my 20s are when I gave God my utmost, my everything. I, tell, I talk about the conferences I went to. I talk about the experiences I had. I talk about like, the times I fasted. I talk about like, how God visited me, how I prayed. And that's, that's your testimony. You know, you're not going to talk about how much time you you spend um, on social media or traveling or if you have, I'm not saying these things are wrong. It's just the things that are meaningful, like the, the moments you're going to look back on are those moments with Jesus, are those precious experiences you had in his presence, you know, are those times you went out evangelism, are those times you went out on a mission, are those times that you, trust me, you're not really going to think about all these things that benefited you. You're going to think about your service and you're going to look at it and call it the good old days. In the meantime, it may not look the most exciting, but those stories, I tell you, they are like trophies. They are like experiences that will live forever. The Bible says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? And build for yourself, store up for yourself treasures in heaven that moth and caterpillars can never eat right? And so these are treasures that I'll build in my 20s. I'm not, <laughs> I'm in my 30s, right? And 
I'm still learning that. I'm still learning, you know what? Go hard after God. So that in my 40s, I will look back at my 30s and say, and my 20s and say, wow, like it does pay to serve this Jesus. Last but not least, community. I was blessed with such a community that I, as soon as I got saved, right, I just, I've told this story several times, how I found my church was just on Google. And I know not everybody gets that opportunity. 10 years on, I'm still in the same church. It's just wonderful, God bless me, with a wonderful pastor and friends and, you know, community, right? This is not more so something I would tell my young self. It's just an advice for those who, you know, are young in Christ and you may feel like you got to go. You just have acquaintances. You just know many young people who are after God, but you don't have, you don't quite have a church, a body. I tell you, that is necessary. That has saved me from a lot. That has saved me from a lot. Like having a place where people can speak into your life, having a place where people can keep you in check, having a place where pe you are accountable. That stuff is priceless, man. Like you can be gifted. You can speak in tongues. You can pray and, and heal the sick and cast out demons. But if someone can't keep you in check, if somebody can't tell your brother, like, you know, that, that, that your shirt is, is looking a little different today. You know, your hairstyle is a little off. You're looking a little off. Like you won't go really far in this walk. So I'm telling you like community, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of the brethren. It's very important because guess what? If you by yourself, all you see is outside. But when you're around people, people can see you. So when there's, uh, you know, there's trash on your face, when there's a stain on your shirt, people can call you out and say, you know, you got a stain on your shirt. You would see things about, you would know more about you when you're around people than when you're by yourself. Yeah, because they will point it out. And it's iron sharpening iron. You point out, you know, you help people out, they help you out, you grow, you all become better together. So it's an urge for uh, just urging my 20 self, I would even take my relationships a little more seriously like it's very important we are saved into a kingdom and that's why we call each other brother and sister right like that union that relationship is strong because we're all sons and daughters of the most high and if we're all sons and daughters of the most high then those are my brothers then those are my sisters right and that relationship is real and i don't want anybody to miss out on it so these are three things that I would tell my twins self to adhere to. They're very important. And I feel like they're gonna just keep getting more important as life goes on.